morning, Monroe School District. It's so great to be here. My name is Ryan Lundquist. I work with the local fire department, Snohomish Regional Fire and Rescue. And this morning, I get the opportunity to read you a story. So this morning, we're going to read Grand Canyon by Jason Chin. So hopefully you guys haven't seen this before. I've not read this book before, so I'm excited to jump into the Grand Canyon. Let us know if you've been to the Grand Canyon before. So, Grand Canyon by Jason Chin. Grand Canyon is one of the largest canyons in the world. It is 277 miles long, as much as 18 miles wide and more than a mile deep, but it's much more than just a big hole in the ground. It's home to an astonishing variety of plants and animals. The canyon is much hotter and drier at the bottom than at the top. Because of this, different groups of plants and animals or ecological communities are found at different elevations in the canyon. The hottest part of the canyon is at the very bottom, a thousand feet deep chasm called the Inner Gorge. Whew, that's deep. The Inner Gorge may be the hottest part of the canyon, but there are oases in the desert. Creeks bring life-giving water into the gorge, and a wide variety of species live along their banks, including frogs, dragonflies, mule deer, and the endangered southwestern willow flycatcher. Ooh, that sounds fun. Many of these creatures are permanent residents that rely on running water for survival, while others are visitors drawn here by their thirst. Eventually, every creek in the canyon flows into the largest stream of all. The Colorado River. The Colorado runs the entire length of the Grand Canyon, continually washing sediment away and slowly deepening its channel. It's been cutting into the land for around 5 million years, slicing through layer after layer of rock. Today, it's cutting into the Vishnu basement rocks. These rocks are part of the continental basement, the bottommost layer of rock on the continent. Oof. The basement rocks are the oldest in the canyon, as much as 1.84 billion years old. Many younger rock layers are stacked on top of them. If you hike out of the canyon, you'll pass younger and younger layers as you climb, as if walking up through time. Above the basement layer, you'll reach the Grand Canyon Supergroup. Here you may find ripple marks preserved in the stone. Clues like these tell us what this place was like when the rock formed. They are like windows. And then look, there's a little window there. This is Grand Canyon 1.2 billion years ago, when the only living things on Earth were microbes such as algae and bacteria. Although they were too small to see, these primitive organisms filled the oceans and were some of the earliest life forms on the planet. The mud from this tidal flat eventually transformed into a layer of solid rock, and these ripple marks were preserved in the process. They are now part of the Grand Canyon Supergroup. After climbing out of the inner gorge, you'll find yourself on a broad sun-baked slope. The plants and animals here are well adapted for life with little water. Black-throated sparrows can go for long periods without taking a drink. And many creatures sleep during the heat of the day. Pocket mice forage at night and are preyed on by owls and rattlesnakes who are adapted for hunting in the dark. These animals are living on the rock layer called the Bright Angel Shale, which formed more than 200 million years after the Grand Canyon Supergroup. Trilobite fossils in the rocks tell us that this spot once lay beneath the sea. This is Grand Canyon. 515 million years ago, by this time in Earth's history, many multicellular plants and animals had evolved. Soft-bodied jellyfish floated above calm-like brachiopads and tiny hyalites, some of, first some of the first creatures on Earth with shells. Trilobites, the first animals known to have had eyes, roamed the sea floor. 
Around them, worm-like creatures burrow in the sediment, sediment that eventually transformed into the bright angel shale. Oh, you guys were teaching me a lot. Towering over the bright angel shale is a massive cliff called the Red Wall Limestone. The Red Wall has many inaccessible caves that provide nesting spots for one of the rarest birds in the world, the California condor. With a nine foot wingspan and weighing as much as 23 pounds, the condor is the largest land bird in North America. Condors are vultures, and during the Ice Age, they fed on the carcasses of mega beasts like giant ground sloths. Since then, their population has declined due to changes in climate and human activity, and now, unfortunately, they are close to extinction. Above the Redwall Cliff is a slope of rust red rock. The climate here is not as hot and dry as below, and pinyon pines and Utah junipers are common. Many creatures such as squirrels, chipmunks, and wood rats eat their seeds. These small rodents are preyed on by gopher snakes and coyotes. At the top of the slope is the rock layer called the Hermit Formation. Fossils in the Hermit tell us that long ago, this spot was home to huge dragonflies with eight inch wingspans. This is Grand Canyon 280 million years ago. By this time, life was flourishing on land and trees, ferns, fish, amphibians, and reptiles had evolved. The sea had retreated from the region and rivers flowed across the landscape. Seed ferns and conifers grew along their banks and amphibians left their tracks in the mud, mud that eventually transformed into the hermit formation. Above the red slopes of the Hermit are pale 350-foot cliffs. Bighorn sheep easily navigate their narrow ledges with specially adapted hooves. In the fall mating season, males compete for dominance by smashing into each other with their battering ram horns. These cliffs have been carved from the Coconino sandstone. Fossil footprints in the rock tell us that on this spot 275 million years ago, An early reptile walked across huge, wide-swept dunes. With little water, life here would have been very difficult, but the desert wasn't entirely barren. Among the other species that called it home were scorpions, millipedes, and spiders. As the desert wind whipped across the landscape, sand piled up in thin layers. Today, those layers are preserved in the Coconino sandstone as thin, angled surfaces called cross beds. That does not look like a fun place to go. As you approach the rim of the canyon, the climate becomes cooler and more moist. Vegetation on the sloping Toro Weep formation is more dense than below. Before exiting the canyon, however, there is one more layer to scale, the Kabib formation. The Kabib limestone cliffs are full of marine fossils that tell us about life here 270 million years ago. When the ocean again covered the land. Fossils in the Kabib formation tell us of a complex ecosystem. The seafloor was home to sea lilies and bryozoans, sponges, and coral. Trilobites and brachiopads lived alongside them while nautiloids and as many as 40 species of shark patrolled the water above them. Many of these creatures, such as coral and brachiopods, had hard shells. When they died, their shells piled up on the sea floor and eventually transformed into the limestone of the Kaibab Formation. Wow. If you ascend from the Colorado River to the south rim of the Grand Canyon, you will have climbed nearly 5,000 feet and pass through three distinct habitats. Above the rim, you'll find one more. The Ponderosa Pine Forest is home to tassel-eared squirrels, deer, and elk. Bobcats, coyotes, and hawks hunt here, as well as the top predators in the canyon, mountain lions. Because of its great size and depth, Grand Canyon has a wide range of climates and habitats, 
and species that call the canyon home today survive oh species that call the canyon home today survive on ancient rocks rocks that tell us about life here long before there was a canyon whoa look how cool this picture is you guys it's as big as me It's taken millions of years of weathering and erosion to expose these rocks and shape this breathtaking landscape. And these processes continue to this day, relentlessly excavating or digging. The grandest canyon on earth. How cool that is the end of this book. Then on the back, they have all kinds of cool, you can learn more about what lived there, what kind of trees, what kind of rocks they have, what kind of birds lived there, and a little bit about the author. So thank you guys so much for letting me, for teaching me about the Grand Canyon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, let us know if uh, you guys have been to the Grand Canyon before and come by the fire station and show me some pictures. All right, take care.